What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith, one half of the Blue Bloods College Game Time Podcast, back with another video. I hope everyone had a Merry Christmas, but I want to talk about a few interesting underlying storylines about this Sugar Bowl we have before us. Okay, we've got Ole Miss, we've got Baylor. Not that there's any kind of history between those two programs. However, there are some deeper connections that will make this game interesting, even to the common college football fan. So before we get into all that, please hit subscribe. Go ahead. Those of you that have already subscribed, man, we thank you so much and appreciate your support. We've uh, definitely caught a huge wave of momentum in the month of December, and we're hoping to carry that into 2022. All right, let's get back to the Sugar Bowl. So Jeff Levy, let's start here. Jeff Levy, the offensive coordinator for Ole Miss, who recently just left to take the same position for the Oklahoma Sooners, but he's, it's his offense, him and Lane Kiffin. Let me back up even further. When Lane Kiffin left Alabama to go be the head coach at Florida Atlantic. He brought in Kendall Bryles as his offensive coordinator. That became the beginning of this veer and shoot Lane Kiffin wrinkle sort of marriage of an offensive philosophy. Now the veer and shoot, if you're a Baylor fan, you know that that is the offense that the bears made famous under coach Art Bryles. When Coach Art Riles came to Waco in 2008, I believe, he brought both Jeff Levy and Kendall Bryles. And both of those guys stayed on the staff all the way until 2016. So they were a part of that program for nine years, d- designed the offense, innovated the offense, and then saw it through all the way to winning a couple of conference championships, getting a couple of BCS uh, or New Year's Six bowl bids, and so on and so forth. And, and, and we kind of know the history there that happened of when all that sort of turned over on its head. However, Guys like Jeff Levy, guys like Kendall Bryles, they've taken that offense to other places. And one of the people who has taken interest in that and added his own wrinkles is Lane Kiffin. So here in the past couple years at Ole Miss, you've had Jeff Levy and Lane Kiffin with this sort of Kiffinized version of the veer and shoot, the offense that the Baylor Bears made famous. And so it's interesting because if you look at the quarterback Baylor had that helped make this offense famous, that really put the Baylor Bears on the map, yeah, the guy who won the Heisman Trophy, the guy who went on to be the number two overall pick in the NFL draft and win Rookie of the Year, none other than RG3. If you if you look back on how he played the game and compare it to Ole Miss's quarterback, Matt Corral, you'll see a lot of similarities between the two. First off, they're, they both have the a very same like physical frame. Okay, they're built the same physically. Secondly, both guys throw a beautiful deep ball. You know, in the veer and shoot, it's we're going to pound you, pound you, pound you, and then boom, play action, throw it over the top. Baylor used to do that all the time. Ole Miss does that. And Matt Corral drops it. I mean, he drops dimes right on the money, just like RG3 used to do. And then third, they both will do whatever it takes to will their team to a victory. In fact, RG3 probably took life off of his NFL years off of his NFL career shelf life because of how hard he played the game. He was willing to put his body on the line. He took hits that as a quarterback, you don't want your quarterback taking, right? Matt Corral does the same thing. He's not scared. He's not scared to put his head down. He's not scared to put his body on the line. And it's just, it's, it's so ironic that it's like you have this very similar style player playing in almost the exact style offense going into a sugar bowl against the team who made all of that famous. The biggest difference though, between RG three and Matt Corral is RG three. We all know was a world-class sprinter. So at any point in the game from anywhere on the field, he was a threat to go score a touchdown with his legs. Whereas Matt Corral, he's just not the world-class sprinter that RG three was, but he does make plays with his legs and he isn't as scared to put his body on the line, just like RG three wasn't afraid to do. So there is some similarities there. And then finally, we've got this Lane Kiffin versus Dave Aranda matchup. This will be the fourth time both of these guys have faced off either as coordinators or as a head coach coordinator going all the way back to 2010. The first time these two faced off was when Lane Kiffin was the head coach at USC and Dave Aranda was the defensive coordinator at Hawaii and Lane Kiffin won. Then they faced against each other again in 2015 where Lane Kiffin was the OC at Bama and Dave Aranda was the DC at Wisconsin and Lane Kiffin won. 
And then they played again in 2016 when Lane Kiffin was the OC at Bama still and Dave Aranda was the DC at LSU and Lane Kiffin won. So yes, Lane Kiffin is 3-0 and against Dave Aranda. However, if you look at the trend of each time they played each other, Dave Aranda's defense has got a lot better than the last time they played a Lane Kiffin offense. Meaning the first time they faced each other, uh, Aranda's defense gave up 49 points. Now, granted, it was he had Hawaii and Kiffin had USC. And back in 2010, there was a significant talent uh, gap there. However, when the two faced each other in 2016, Bama versus LSU, LSU only gave up 10 points. And, you know, I'm, I've always erred on the side. And if you've watched any of these videos we do, you know this. Anytime two coaches are facing each other multiple times, I always give the advantage to the defensive-minded coach. I just do. I said it about Dave Aranda going into the Big 12 championship, facing Mike Gundy for the second time this season. I felt like he had the upper hand because he's the defensive-minded guy. And the defensive-minded guy always has the upper hand because now they know how you're trying to attack them and can better prepare. Now, does that, does that argument hold weight in this situation? Not necessarily. It's been five years since they've seen each other. The first time they saw each other was over a decade ago. And as we all know, the game of football has changed cons consistently or, or constantly over the course of that time. However, I do think that the style of offense that Ole Miss runs – Dave Aranda will have a pretty solid game plan to try and contain and stop. However, if this game turns into a track meet, Ole Miss is going to win. But if Dave Aranda can turn this into a gritty slugfest where it comes down to a field goal here or a field goal there, I'm giving Baylor the upper hand. Because one thing Kiffin has shown he will, he, he will not hesitate to do this year is leave points on the field. I mean, I'd, I'd be curious to know the averages, but if you look at how many times he's gone for it on fourth and short in field goal range and missed it, I mean, there's been games where he's left 9 to 12 points on the field. So I'm definitely anticipating a good game, unless the game becomes a track meet, and at that point, Ole Miss probably wins in a blowout. But I think if Aranda can keep it one of those gritty, close slugfests like he's done all throughout the season, what behind his, you know, anchored behind his stout defense and his all-american safety maybe it'll be a close game and if lane kiffin continues to leave those points out on the field it could turn in baylor's favor i don't know i'm looking forward to just seeing jeff levy coaching against baylor you know even though he's taking the job at ou reports are that he's still going to coach in the sugar bowl and uh i mean you talk about a guy who he was a student assistant at ou coached one year i think of high school ball before um, getting the job in Waco and was there for really his first nine years in the profession. I mean, that's where he cut his teeth. That's where he was a part of uh, helping design and create one of the most innovative offenses in the landscape of college football today. Now he's been combined with Lane Kiffin and his offensive brain power, and they've kind of put some of their own wrinkles to it. And it should be a fun game to watch, and it's a very ironic game to watch because now here we are six years later watching another team use the offense that Baylor designed against Baylor, who Baylor is now a team that is anchored by its defense. So that's just the beauty of college football. It's kind of poet poetic, if you ask me. I'm looking forward to a great game. Hey, that's all I've got. Please hit subscribe. Peace.